CDL Book Club, Jeff Mills right here on the CDL Book Club grounds. And we want to start with the pre-trip inspection for the tractor trailer, Class A. You always want to start with your keys in your pocket and your wheels are going to be chalk. Your keys in the pocket and wheels are chalk. You tell the examiner that your keys are in your pocket, your wheels are chalk. And you want to start at the top of the vehicle. And keep in mind, you have to, if it's rain, sleet, snow, or shine, you got to do your test. So don't worry about what the weather is. All right, so start at the top of the vehicle with your ID clearance lights, your turn signal lights. Not cracked, not broken, not secure. They are amber in color and no condensation. You start with the windshield. You go to the windshield, it's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No obstructions, no outdated stickers. The windshield wipers, not cracked, not broken, and secure. Flush to the windshield, not drive out of the freight. Move down to your fender mirror. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No loose or missing parts. Go to your grill. No obstructions. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. Yeah, your headlights. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No condensation. Clean and clear. You look underneath the vehicle. Checking underneath the vehicle for any leaks or puddles, any loose or hanging wires, and. You want to make sure that you have no leaks or puddles, no loose or hanging wires or broken glass. If you had any leaks or wires or broken glass, you want to check to make sure that you do not have that and you will say, I will put place my vehicle out of service. The balance of the vehicle, the suspe suspension is balanced. If it wasn't balanced, you'll place your vehicle out of service. And all tires are properly inflated. Now, you move to opening up your hood. You want to make sure that your hood latches are open. So you just grab and place your foot down, give you a little bit of leverage to pull back, okay? Pull back and you control the engine. You control the hood and you go into your engine compartment on the passenger side. And you want to start from top right, right to left, top to bottom, in and out to you. You have two systems here braking and suspension you're not going to mention those parts the only thing you want to do is mention only the parts that are not on the driver's side so we want to start with the radiator it's not cracked not broken and secure no leaks and you talk about the radiator hose it's not cracked not broken and secure not dry rod or frayed properly clamped and no leaks and this is where you make time. So you'll say you'll talk about all the rest of your hoses the same way that you talked about your initial hose. That's how you make time. Now you don't have to talk about your hoses. Now you go down to the bottom radiator hose here goes to your water pump. Okay, so you follow that on up to the water pump and you say that the water pump is not cracked, not broken and secure and no leaks and the water pump on this truck is belt driven since you talked about the belt talk about the belt the belt is not cracked not broken and secure and it has no more than three quarter inch play just kind of tug on it and it's not dry rod or afraid now you have your exhaust exhaust runs from the manifold underneath the cab up the back to the stack here and you say it's not cracked not broken and secure no leaks how do you check the exhaust for leaks if it's not running it should show it would show black soot and that's the black soot that comes out of the tailpipe okay then you go to your steps your steps anything metal you say not cracked not broken and secure no debris, no illegal welds. Then you go to your fuel tank. The fuel tank is not cracked, not broken, it's secure. No leaks. Should have a metal chain and a rubber seal around the cap. And the fuel tank is not cracked, not broken, it's secure. No leaks. And held up by metal and rubber straps. Not cracked, not broken, and secure, not dry, rotted, or frayed, no illegal welds, and 
fuel, the fuel tank has fuel lines. They're not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. And on this truck, you want to mention your air tanks. Now, because you have a kit here, right beside the fuel tank is your air tank. So you mentioned the air tank. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. F free of condensation and drained daily. Remember that. Drained daily. Now, you finish the, your passenger side, so we're going to go to the driver's side. And remember the rule when you start on the driver's side, you know it's three systems here, but we got to start from the top first. Top right to left, top to bottom, in and out to you. So we're going to start with the coolant reservoir. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. And it should read between the add and full mark. You have your power wa windshield washer fluid reservoir. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. And then you go down and across. Alternator. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. And alternator bracket. No illegal welds. Alternator is belt driven. The cables. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. Not dry, rotted, or frayed. Then you move over to your oil fill and your oil dipstick. You say it's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. How you would check it? You pull the dipstick out, wipe it off, insert it back in, and pull it out. And it should read between the ad and the full mark. Then you go over to your AC compressor. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. It's gear driven. No leaks in the hoses. Now, you start with your three systems. First system is your stirring system. Your power stirring reservoir. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. And it should read between the ad and the full mark. How you check it? Check it the same way as you check your oil. Pull the dipstick out. Wipe it off. Insert it back in. Pull it back out. And it should read between the ad and the full mark. Do you have to do it? No. You just have to say it. Next you go to your steering shaft. Your steering shaft. Not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal welds. And it should have no more than two inches of play. See that little play right there? No more than two inches of play. Then it goes down to the universal joints. It's not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal welds, no loose or missing parts, and no debris wrapped around it. And remember, the drive shaft and the universal joints looks just like this, but the drive shaft is going to be a lot bigger. And the universal joints. Next, you go to your gearbox. Your gearbox is not cracked, not broken and secure, no leaks, no loose or missing parts. And this bottom hose here, you have one hose that goes to from the power stern reservoir, go down to the gearbox. The second hose it goes to the back to your power stirring pump stirring pump it's not cracked not broken and secure no leaks no loose missing parts it's in the rear of the engine so it won't be belt driven so the opposite of belt driven is gear driven then we come back remember where you are we left at the power stirring gearbox next we go to the Pittman arm drag link down to the universal joint and you have I'm sorry not the universal gear the drag link upper and lower control arms and the lower control arm is connected to the tie rod which is all the way at the bottom down here and they are not cracked not broken and secure no illegal welds they are connected by the castle nut and cotter pins castle nut and cotter pins and you have a castle nut and cotter pin up front here also and in between all metal parts your steering linkage is a rubber bushing or rubber bushings the rubber bushing is not cracked not broken and secure not dry rod or free and in the last part for the steering system would be your spindle spindle is not cracked not broken and secure and no loose or missing parts, no leaks. Next system is going to be system number two, and we have that right here. You're going to start with the ABS line, 
ABS line, the brake hose, not cracked, not broken and secure, no leaks, not driver out of the freight. And that brake line goes to the brake chamber and the brake chamber bracket. It's not cracked, not broken and secure. The brake chamber is not dented and no illegal welds and no loose or missing parts. Then you have what goes into the brake chamber is your push rod and slack adjuster and adjusting nut. It's not cracked, not broken and secure. No loose or missing parts not, and no illegal welds. And when you pull on it by your hand, you should not be able to pull on it no more than one inch with the brakes released. And that information is in chapter 11, page 11.3. Now, inside the wheel is going to be the brake drum. And let me show you from the outside of the wheel. So you have inside the wheel here, inside the wheel, right here is going to be your brake drum. This is where you got to be CDL minded. So your inside the wheel is your brake drum. It's not cracked, not broken and secure, not dented. Inside the brake drum are your brakes. And what lines your brakes are your brake shoe linings. And your brake shoe linings should not be worn dangerously thin. And then you have the brake cam or you can say S cam because it's in the shape of an S and your cam rollers and return spring the next part and those are not cracked not broken and secure no illegal welds no loose or missing parts now system number three is going to be your suspension system and we're going to start right here on the standard part system you have leaf springs on an air ride suspension vehicle which this is is you want to have instead of leaf springs you will have a control arm the control arm and it goes down to the universal joints and the anchor plate it's not cracked not broken and secure not shifted or missing no illegal welds and they're sitting on the axle sitting on the axle it's not cracked not broken and secure no illegal welds and what you have here is a rubber bellow there's air inside that bellow so you want to say not cracked not broken and secure not dry rotted afraid and no leaks and you have a spacer and they are hung up by the hanger and the hanger support bracket here and they are connected to the frame and cross members so you will say not cracked not broken and secure no illegal welds no loose or missing parts and the last part on the suspension would be your hydraulic shock absorber hydraulic shock absorber it's not cracked not broken and secure no leaks and you have a hydraulic shock absorber bracket here and no loose or missing parts no illegal welds and you have right here this bolt right here is called an eye bolt so you want to mention that as well and they are not cracked not broken and secure no illegal welds no loose or missing parts now you work your way from in and out to you so now we want to talk about the steering tires the steering tires you should have no less than 432 in tread depth the tread depth should be evenly worn and to check the depth you can check the depth with a depth gauge and the tires should be properly inflated no cuts or bulges on the side walls and how you check the air you check the air pressure with a rubber mallet or air pressure gauge on your valve stem the valve stem is not cracked not broken and secure no leaks should have a metal cap then you talk about your wheel the wheel is not cracked, not broken, and secure. No illegal welts. Your lug nuts, not cracked, not broken, and secure. None are loose or missing. If they were loose or missing, they would show rust or shininess. And you have an oil hub. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks, no loose or missing parts. On the tire, the front steering tires, they cannot be recapped. They cannot be recapped. Your rear tires can be recapped. Now, 
we have worked ourselves from in from top to bottom in and out now we are at the point we left the two systems on the passenger side so this is where you mentioned that at so you'll say I will mention the passenger side systems the same way as I did the driver side now you close up your hood and you know you want to come back to this part so you want to close your hood up and you want to come on the passenger side and fasten your latches but you want to make sure that you practice with your latches so that those so you're not fumbling with the latches and then you work your way on over to the driver side and you're going to close up your latches on the driver side close them up now they firmly now this is your starting point and you're not going to go back on the passenger side for for no other reason you're just going to work your way down the, the driver's so, side now now we're going to start here with our flat mirror or you can say west coast mirror or spot mirror or convex mirror and the mirror bracket it's not cracked not broken and secure and you go to your door open and close the door your, your door your hinges and you should have a rubber seal not cracked not broken and secure and not dry rotted afraid now your emergency equipment on this truck is going to be right right in this compartment now to open up the door here's a little lever right here to open up your door so you pull that out and you open up your door you close the drive side door and your emergency equipment you have your fully charged fire extinguisher three rectangles reflective rectangles and your spare fuses they're going to be right here in, in your compartment right here and you want to mention that for your DLA to know for your emergency equipment then you go here your turn signal it's not cracked not broken and secure it's amber in color no condensation you're going to say amber in the front red to the rear so we just gonna and but keep separate the truck and the trailer because right here I want to show you on the top of the trailer when you talk about your turn signals that amber in the front and red to the rear of the trailer also so you got to keep both of them separate now we're at the rear of the cab so remember the rules start from the top and work your way down all right so we're going to start from the top here and this is your cable connector holder here it's metal these keep your your cables from getting tangled up okay then you have your handle which is metal also so you can combine them not cracked not broken and secure no illegal welds and you have your your rear light it's not cracked not broken and secure it's white in color no condensation and here is your stowaway your dummy couplings for your glad hands not cracked not broken and secure no loose or missing parts now we want to talk about your cables so you have, so your green line is your electric line, and your blue line is your service line, your airline, and your red line is your brake line. And you want to say it's not cracked, not broken, and secure, not dry, rotted, or frayed, and no leaks, and no leaks, and you have rubber rubber seals in there that you want to mention no uh, not dry rod afraid and no leaks okay now we move down to the catwalk your catwalk and your step here it's not cracked not broken and secure no debris and no illegal welds underneath that is your battery box the battery box is not cracked not broken and secure and inside the battery box is your your batteries all your batteries and they are not cracked not broken and secure 
no leaks, no corrosion around the post, and the and your cables are not cracked, not broken, and secure, and not dry rotted or frayed. Underneath your battery box, you have your drive shaft, your drive shaft, and your universal joints. See your universal joints here. Not crack, and it goes to your rear differential. Okay, not crack, not broken, and secure. No illegal welds, no debris wrapped around your universal joints. No leaks in your rear differential. Now we want to go to our two systems on the front axle here. Right. So right here on the first axle, you know it's going to be your two systems, your braking and suspension. All right, so you want to start with the ABS line. ABS line, brake hose, not cracked, not broken and secure, not dry rotted, no leaks, to the brake chamber. It's not cracked, not broken and secure, not dented, no leaks. And the push rod is going to be behind the, behind the brake chamber. You have the push rod, the slack adjuster and adjusting nut, and then Inside the wheel is going to be your brake drum. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. Not dented. Inside the brake drum is going to be your brakes. Your brakes are lined with the brake shoe lining. They're not cracked, not broken, and secure. Not, not worn dangerously thin. Then you have the brake cam, or you can say S cam, cam rollers, and return springs. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No loose or missing parts. Then you have your wheels and your tires. You have to mention that they are no less than 232 in tread depth and tires should be evenly worn there. You can check the gauge, uh, check, the, check the depth with the air pressure gauge and you check the air pressure with the air pressure gauge or a rubber mallet. No cuts or bulges on the sidewalls. No debris in between the tires. These tires are, or these wheels here are bud wheels. They're budded together. The opposite of bud is Dayton. That means there's a spacer in between. So now you have the wheel. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No illegal welds. All lug nuts are in place. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. None are lift, uh, missing. No, they're not loose. If they were loose, they would show rust or shininess. Axle, it's not cracked, not broken and secure. No leaks, no loose or missing parts. Valve stem is here. Not cracked, not broken and secure. No leaks, and it should have a metal cap. Now, what you want to say here is I will mention my passenger side the same way as I did the driver's side. Then you say, I will mention the tandem axle the same way as I did my first axle here. Now, you, your fifth wheel is centered right here in the middle. So now, you want to mention your fifth wheel. Fifth wheel's not cracked, not broken, and secure, properly greased, no loose or missing parts, no space between the fifth wheel and the apron. You should see no light, no gap. Then you have your release arm. The fifth wheel is sitting on the on the bracket. This is a sliding fifth wheel, meaning it's, it's a just an adjustable fifth wheel. And you have in between the fifth wheel is the lock jaw, which goes around the king pin. And you want to keep the the truck separate from the trailer. So you want to continue with the piston and the hoses. And you have a torsion bar in the middle as well. It's like a stabilizing bar. So you can mention that. And all these parts are not cracked, not broken, and secure. No illegal welds, no leaks, not dry rotted or frayed. No loose or missing parts. Now that's the fifth wheel. Now we go to the rear of the truck, to your mud flaps, and they are not dragging, they're rubber, so you want to say not cracked, not broken, and secure, not dry, rotted, or frayed, 
DOT tape, not cracked, not broken, and secure. Clean and clear. Then you go to your rear brake lights. They're red in color. And your reverse light, white in color. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No condensation. Now you go, you come up. Once you finish the truck, you come up to the header board. Now that you have finished the your truck, now you start on the trailer. So you come to the front of the trailer, as this is the header board. So start from the top. That's your, your ID clearance light. Amber in color, not cracked, not broken, and secure. No condensation, amber in the front. Red to the rear. Now you talk about your your glad hand couplings and electrical coupling. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. Okay. Then you work down the trailer. DOT tape. Yes, I mentioned DOT tape for the truck, but this is the trailer. You got to keep them separate. DOT tape runs down the side. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure, and clean and clear. Then you go down to your landing gear. Landing gear is raised properly. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No loose or missing parts. And the your handle is in the locked position. Then you go to underneath the vehicle, underneath the trailer here. You have your your air lines and wires, not cracked, not broken and secure, not dry rod afraid, no leaks. And you have your cross members and the frame, it's not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal welds, no loose or missing parts. The deck, no holes in the deck, not cracked, not broken and secure. Then you go down to your rear axle. You know there's two systems here, the braking and suspension. So you want to start with the braking. So you have the ABS line and brake holes going to the brake chamber and the brake chamber bracket. Not cracked, not broken and secure, not dry rod of the freight, not dented, no leaks, and Behind the brake chamber is your push rod and slack adjuster and adjusting nut. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. And you check those by pulling by hand. They should not be able to be pulled no more than one inch. And you have inside the wheel, you can look at either side of the wheels here. Those you have inside the wheel is your brake drum. And ins inside the brake drum, are your brakes and your brake shoe lining. Not cracked, not broken and secure. The brake drum is not dented. The brake shoes are not worn dangerously thin. No loose or missing parts. And then inside you have the brake cam, the cam roller and return springs. Not cracked, not broken and secure. No loose or missing parts. And you want to mention, don't forget, right here, this big old part right here, you can't forget that, is your air tank for your air brakes. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No illegal welds, no leaks. Drained daily. Drained daily. This is the valve right here where you drain. Let me show you. You just turn it. And you release any condensation or oil inside the tank. Now, you have your suspension. You have the rear control arm, the rubber bellows, and you have a hydraulic shock absorber. And you could possibly see the hydraulic shock absorber better right here on this side, right here. You don't have to get underneath here, but we want to we want to show you what you're looking for and what to mention. So the 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 bellow has a spacer, and you have an eye bolt on your hanger. You have U bolts, 
and the anchor plate and the hangers. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No illegal welds, no loose or missing parts. The bellow, no leaks. The hydraulic shock absorber, no leaks. And you want to mention no illegal welds. And the axle on the U-bolt. The U-bolts are going around the axle here. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. The axle, not cracked, not broken, and secure, and no illegal welds. And then you have your tires. The tires are properly inflated. The tread depth is even, evenly worn. No cuts or bulges on the side walls. And the tread depth should be no less than 232 in tread depth. Properly inflated and how you check the tread depth is with a gauge or a and with you check the air pressure with a air pressure gauge or a rubber mallet. In the middle here, in, in between the wheels, in between the wheels is your bud, this is a bud wheel. Okay, opposite of bud wheel is a spacer and no illegal welds, no debris. And now you want to talk about the wheel. So your wheel, it's not cracked, not broken, it's secure. No illegal welds. The lug nuts, not cracked, not broken, it's secure. None are loose or missing. If they were loose or missing, they would show shininess or rust. You have a valve stem. Valve stem with the valve stem metal, valve stem cap. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. And now you will mention the passenger side. You will say, I will mention the passenger side the same way as I mentioned the driver side. And that will cover the passenger side. Now you come to the rear. Here's your mud flap. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. Not dragging. Not dry rotted or frayed. To the rear, you have the rear DOT bumper. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No illegal welds, no loose or missing parts. Your tag, properly secure, up to date stickers, and your tag light. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No condensation. And let's work our way up right here to the brake light. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. Red in color, no condensation. Then you can mention the door. Not cracked, not broken, and secure. No loose or missing parts. And you remember you said red to the rear on your ID clearance lights. And that will be the end of your trailer. And then you go forward up to the inside the trailer. Inside the tractor, you want to mention that you want to enter and exit with three points of contact and you will tell the DLA that you will enter the vehicle with three points of contact one hand on the handrail one foot on the brake I mean on the step and one foot on the ground one two three three points of contact and then you enter the vehicle and then you, first thing you do when you enter the vehicle is place your, put your seatbelt on, your seat and your seatbelt properly locked, and then turn the vehicle on and do the inner inspection. So what you want to do is you want to tell the DLA that you're going to enter and exit the vehicle with three points of contact. One hand on the handrail, one foot on the step, and one foot on the ground. One, two, three. And you enter the vehicle. You close up the vehicle, and first thing you do is put your seatbelt on. So you say that the seat and the seat belt properly locks, and the belt is not frayed. And you're going to say that your mirrors are adjusted for you. And the steering wheel 
there is no more than 10 degrees of play or two inches. So when you start the vehicle, you want to turn the key so that your dash lights up. All your indicators and your dash lights up. Then you turn the key and hold the key so the vehicle starts up. Okay, you turn it to the right. All right. Now, vehicle is on. Now you want to talk about the key word inside the vehicle is proper, properly, properly works. Okay, the key phrase is properly works. So we'll start with the your horns. Your city horn properly works. Air horn properly works. Remember, no more than 10 degrees of play on your steering wheel and your mirrors are adjusted for you. Remember that. Your, you always start from the left and work your way to the right. So we want to start with the indicators. So you turn on your left indicator properly works. The right indicator properly works. And your four-way flashers. There's a red tab here where you pull and your and your indicators, your four-way flasher indicators will show and you want to say they properly work. Now to turn them off, you just flick the handle up and your four-way flashes will turn off. And then you just pull the tab back down. All right, then here's a light switch here. Your lights, this is your light switch. You just flick this up and you want to lift up. Right here it says lift up for your high beam indicator. Now it's blue so you can, it's, a, it's very faint but it's right there. So you just want to point and show that your high beam indicator properly works. And then turn it off, okay? Then you turn your lights back off. Your windshield wipers, you push in and make your windshield wipers turn on. You push them in and down the bottom is the wash. So you make the fluid you push that in and make the fluid show. You want to make sure you say that your windshield wipers are flush to the windshield. They're flush to the windshield. And you turn them off. Your indicators, as far as your reverse, neutral, drive, and low, you put your vehicle in reverse. It goes in reverse. Put it in drive. And you push in this yellow tab right here. You do not want to lift up this handle. If you lift this handle up, you put the vehicle in manual. This is an automatic 10 speed. So you don't want to lift this lever up at any time. If you do, the vehicle you have to turn the vehicle off and wait about 10 minutes and that's a lot of time wasted okay now we go over to our dash and you start at the top you have the oil dash oil gauge and it raises up to between 60 and all of this information is for your dash is on page two four in your books page two four so stud study that information so you have your oil pressure gauge you have your temperature gauge your temperature gauge ra it rises when the vehicle warms up your voltmeter gauge this is for your batteries it should read between 12 and 14 12 and 14 the voltmeter this is your tachometer. When you accelerate, your tachometer properly works. Your speedometer, that will move when you're rolling. 
then you go up to your air pressure gauges your air pressure gauges and where the tabs are 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 pointing that means that you have reached the governor cutoff rate your fuel gauge should be between halfway and full when we take the test and then down bottom here is your your air your vents you turn them on and your vents should should uh, blow you want to feel say that they properly work then you turn them off and you don't have to worry about any anything else now all right they don't want to know what you're playing on the radio or anything like that here's your parking brake and your trailer brake now now speaking of the brakes I want to make sure I want you to I want you to see something firmly to the my ground. feet they're not touching anything to do the, the brake pedal pressure. or the accelerator and we're getting ready to do the low air pressure test your air brake test so what you want to do the first steps is that the first step step number one is to turn off the vehicle step number one turn off the vehicle step number two is turn the key on so the dash lights up so you just turn the key to the right and the dash lights up all your indicators now step number three is to push in your brakes your parking brake and your trailer brake so you push in the parking brake and you push in your trailer brake now keep in mind that your chalk is holding the vehicle now so now you hear the air pressure this information is on page five seven in the book and once you have released the air as you hear it going down decreasing it should only take but a minute so this inf information again is on page five seven in your book okay now you're going to tell the DLA that you are going to do your low air pressure leakage test and you, sh you wanna you wanna watch with a secondhand meter okay look so that and we're gonna start at 12 and we're going to hold the brake down at the service brake we're going to hold the service brake for 60 seconds one minute and we are going to i'm gonna start at three right here starting now i hold the brake down and i'm going to hold this for one minute and you do not move your foot for that one minute and you want to tell the dla that you will that you should not lose no more than four psi within this one minute and this is your gauges you should not lose no more than four psi within the 60 seconds and I'm not moving my foot if you move your foot before the 60 seconds you will fail now we're back so we have 15 more seconds and when we get to the three at 60 seconds I'm going to lift my foot off the brake now I remove my foot and I'm gonna to say to the DLA I did not lose no more than four pounds within the one minute the next test is your low air leakage test and that is you're going to fan your brakes fanning or, or pumping is it's all the same okay so use either term so you're going to fan or pump your brakes down to 60 psi and your low air pressure indicator should show and the buzzer should sound starting now
Now I have reached 60 PSI, my low air pressure buzzer and indicator shown, so they properly work. Now I'm going to continue to fan my brakes down to 40 to 20 PSI, and the brakes that you pushed in should release. So let's watch the brakes starting now. Hear the hissing? It's coming. There you go. So now your your that would be if you have lost an air, that air pressure, your brakes, your emergency brakes would have locked the lock your wheels and your emergency brakes would have applied, and then you'll tell the DLA that your emergency brakes properly work and they pull they both popped out now you have to build the air pressure back up so now you want to turn the vehicle on turn the vehicle on and for a faster way of building that air pressure up is just accelerating to about 1200 between 12, well, 12 and 13, 100 RPM, and that helps build up your air pressure faster, okay? So you can see the, the your air pressure building up. Once you get past 60, the low air pressure indicator and the buzzer Will, will turn off. So now we passed 60 and so that's why you don't hear the low air pressure buzzer. So now we're going to prepare to tug on your brakes, your brake valves here. So you have, you have to tug on your parking brake and tug on the trailer brake. How are we going to do that? So now, once you have reached, you don't have to reach all the way to the governor cutoff rate, but what, so now you just have to build up enough air to do the tug test. So doing the tug test, we're going to push in the parking brake first. Push in the parking brake. You're going to put the vehicle in drive and you're going to tug on the brakes by putting the vehicle in drive and just accelerating and that means where your trailer brake is applied because we pushed in the parking brake so we just accelerate now so we accelerate it and we're in drive so that shows that the and we didn't move through the through the trailer brake so the trailer brake properly works. So now we apply and push in on the dash so the dash doesn't break. Push in on the dash and pull your parking brake. Now we're gonna push in the trailer brake. We push in the trailer brake. Now the parking brake is applied. And so now we have the vehicle in drive and we're going to accelerate the vehicle the, and put the vehicle back in neutral. Now the parking brake properly properly held. So now you just pull your trailer brake back out. Your parking brake properly works. It properly held the vehicle so the vehicle did not drive through the the your brakes in which they're supposed to be holding the vehicle. Now the last thing that you have to do, the last test that you have to do is your service brake test. 
And back in the day, you used to have to do this test. Now you don't have to, you just have to be able to explain it. So what you're going to say is, and this is the last part on page five, seven, you have to say, you're going to put the vehicle in drive. You put the vehicle in drive and you're going to say, you're going to drive five miles an hour forward. You apply the service, the service brake. And when you apply the service brake, the, the vehicle should not pull to the left or pull to the right. Nor should you feel any, um, any movement, any hesitation in the brakes. Like an unusual feel, okay? And then the, you will say that the service brake properly works. Okay, you don't have to do it. Remember that you don't have to do it. You just have to be able to say it So again, you say you put the vehicle in drive you drive five miles an hour forward Apply the service brake and it should not pull to the left or pull to the right. No unusual feel Then that will be the completion of your air brake test So you have to be able to say all of this out in order to be CDL minded Remember, say it first to the DLA. You say it first because when you say it first to the DLA, you are, re you are reminding yourself on what to do. Then after you do the air brake test, you ask the DLA for the buddy system. And that buddy system is, now you have to check your lights from outside. So what you'll do, is if they don't want to use the buddy system then that means you come inside you turn on your lights you turn on your lights and you turn on your your indicators and you go outside and you make sure your left turn indicator properly work you go out you come back in and remember if you have to come back in and out three points of contact then turn on your right indicator your four-way flashers your high beams then you ask the DLA to do the buddy system to check the rear of the vehicle. And you're going to do your left turn. Left turn signal, <clears throat> right turn signal, four-way flashers. Put the vehicle in reverse so you hear the backup alarm and you will see your backup, your reverse light, which is white in color, illuminate. Then you press on your brakes. You press on your service brake right here and you make sure that your brakes work properly then the DLA will go to the rear of the truck and the trailer and they will tell you to press on the brake you press on the brake then you put your left turn signal on then you turn on your right turn signal and then your four-way flashes and remember turn off the four-way flashes you just lift up the handle and put it down all right and then once you have completed all of that that will be the completion of your pre-trip now the DLA is going to walk up to you up to the side window here and they will say okay you pass your pre-trip now prepare yourself for your basic skills test that is chapter 12 in the book all right, straight line backing, offset to the right, and a parallel parking. Good luck.